You know, this is, this is called uh, putting your money where your mouth is. When I come and do these things and do them live, and then you, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, so they asked me to uh, do the brain maps on some people that were having the bars done. And it's like, okay, that's good. You know, I'm open. I'm always pushing the envelope. I'm on the front of the curve that's on the front of the curve. We have to look back to see where the cutting edge is. It, it, so I, all I can tell you is when I, when I saw the results, my jaw dropped. I was so astounded. And you've got to remember, I've been doing this for 16 years. I have seen brains of every kind. And, and all different kinds of conditions. This is the very first time that I've ever seen a brain do what we are about to show you. I mean, I was blown away. It takes a lot to blow me away. This blew me away. So why don't you tell them? Okay, so we didn't mention yesterday that uh, one of the things we do is called bars and it's 32 points on the head that are designed basically to delete file on your computer bank so that you can create a change in any way you want. So everything, you know, the bars are a soft touch. You put on particular points of the head. These release the thoughts, feelings, emotions, considerations, and attitudes you've stored in any lifetime. And the end result is, you know, worst case scenario, your whole life changes. Best case scenario, you feel like you had a great massage. <laughs> so. we, we have several different databases, ways that we can look at this information. And that adds a level of credibility and reliability. And so I'm going to show you all the different ways that we measure this. So we take an EEG, we put the cap on their head, and we, we measured all 19 electrodes. We did eyes closed, brain on task. Then they, they did the bars, and then we did it again, right immediately after. Put the cap on, back on their head, measured eyes closed, brain on task. And I'm going to show you what happened. This is a, a normal brain map. And so this this one is before. This was, and, and you can see the red area that's lit up. That's the area that we identify as PZ. And it's showing that it's, you know, roughly three standard deviations above what would be considered normal. So they did, I, I think it was an hour and a half of running the bars. And then immediately after that, we did it again. And here's what it looks like. Can you see a difference? Yeah, all right. So this was one measure that, that we were able to look at. Let's take a, another glance at something. It's called S. Loretta, and that stands for Scientific um, uh, Low Resolution Electromagnetic Tomography. But forget about that. Here's what it looks like. It came out showing us here, pointer down here where this little red line is. And this area is PZ. That's where it was lit up before. We have a different scale, and down here it's showing us that yellow is three standard deviations above what's normal. Well, we know it's at 2.7 hertz. It's in the delta range, so it's a low frequency. But down here it says it's 4.97. So it's almost five standard deviations above what is considered normal. It is off the scale of what we're seeing here. So here after is what it looked like. See, you can see the, the dark color here is the normal range. It's also saying that the change happened at 2 hertz. Okay, well, that's all well and nice. There's another part that we look at here that is called the S. Loretta part here. And it gives us a triangulation. So we have what's called an x-axis, this black line here. Then the one pointing up in the air is a y-axis, and then we have a z-axis. So we get this triangulation. It's showing us exactly where. And you see this stuff here in the back of the brain? Well, that's PZ. That's where you just saw, you know, it all lit up. So here's the after. It's gone. It's gone. This doesn't happen in my world of measuring brains. Not in a matter of a few minutes. Now, <clears throat> being the scientist I am, that's not good enough for me. That's great, but I want to see it in action. You want to see it in action? Yeah. For real? All right. So here's the brain, the area PZ that we're looking at there. And you can see the red coming in and out, that sort of thing. We're, this is the playback of the EEG. So we've taken her eyes closed EEG and we're now playing it back. So I went through and, and pulled out the pieces that I wanted to show. And they said, okay, make this little movie for me and show it. 
Now let's look at the after as well. Okay, so here's the after. All right, so that's the after. Let's go to the before. You see it? There's the before. We see all, all the red there? Then afterwards, we see this. All right. Is blue good? Now, being the scientist that I am. What does the red mean, Jeff? The red means it's four standard deviations above what's considered normal. It's just very, very active. Okay, it means activity. Okay, got it. Right. Thank you. So we could get into all what kind of activity. It's just very, very active, and it's dealing with focus, concentration, and attention. Okay? So this means the brain's doing this. Okay, that's a scientific term. Okay. Thank you. I like that all right. one. I like that term. <clears throat> all right. So being the scientist I am, that's not good enough for me. I want to see the whole picture, okay? You can see the little heads up here and this one right here in delta. Uh, we're going to watch that as it plays through the sequence of events here. Additional things that are down here that we're looking at are coherence. Coherence is how the brain processes information. Okay, thank you. So there is a hypocoherence and a hypercoherence. <clears throat> the blue here indicates that we have a hypocoherence. So what, what we're seeing happen is the brain is just doing its normal thing. So the, the phase and the coherence is what allows that higher level of consciousness. So in measuring thousands of advanced meditators over the last couple of years and talking to them and looking at their brain maps, we've been able to determine that this relationship between phase and coherence is very important. We've also done some things with heart math where we've had people wear this heart device for 24 hours and we would map them during the brain uh, when, when they were doing meditations. And they would be meditating for two hours at a time in a room like this. So we would have 450 people, and we're measuring some of these people, and looking at the relationship. And when people had these profound experiences, uh, when they were able to uh, have kundalini energy, and we, we map these things, we have validation of them, that the phase and the coherence become very important, and we would see an alignment of the phase and the coherence in what I just showed you, and the heart coherence. So when there is complete heart coherence and brain coherence, then people start to have these magical experiences and start to have energy lining up. And this is about, so when you talk about aligning the energy in the chakras and, and coalescing that energy, this is what we've been looking at. And so what, what I'm seeing in this bars situation is not only a complete physical alignment, but I'm talking about the alignment with the universe because there's a part of the brain called the thalamus that regulates all of these frequencies. And the thalamus, at the top of the thalamus, is a thing called the thalamic gate. Now, at the thalamic gate, there are a set of what we call reticular cells. These reticular cells allow other cells to bind to them, and so there's an axonal columnar cells that grow up out of the brain, and it comes out right here. And what do we call that? The crown chakra. That's the antenna. So when there is what we call oscillation, vibration from the field and it's coming in through your crown chakra going down to the thalamic gate into your brain and all of the frequencies are distributed there it, then it becomes resonation the cells in your body are resonating with that energy so when you have a thought where does it come from it starts down in the subcortical regions of your brain it goes up through the thalamic gate, comes out here, and interacts with the field. Okay, you still with me? Remember yesterday I was talking about 17 seconds? If you hold that energy and you're putting that energy out for 68 seconds, that, that is wave energy that's coming out, right? Once you hold that amount of time, the visualization that you just heard and that you just did, that kind of visualization, if you hold that for 68 seconds, it now has enough mass energy in the brain to affect particle energy. Okay? That's where the transition comes in. So the longer you hold these thoughts, the longer you work with them, whether it's visualization, mind movies, you know, whatever your technique is, the power of that is 
absolutely astronomical. Now, to be able to coalesce that energy and to bring it together in what I just showed you is absolutely possible. And, and I believe we only have, you know, the one person that we processed so far. But as a scientist, I can tell you with what I've seen over the last two years and the thousands of people that I've worked with, this is absolutely amazing. And I'm, I, and I'm sure that... I'm sure that each and every one of you have the ability to harness this energy to start working with that within yourselves because it's not the magic of the science. The science just helps you let you know what is happening and how it's happening to you as an individual.